thank you for staying with us. A few months ago, the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari, approved 113, 134 billion naira as security department allowance, uh, Debar the debarment allowance, thank you, to the deserving retired military officers and personnel. Of course, the, the defense minister told the obviously elated members of the veteran community that the outstanding SDA allowance will be paid over a period of three to five years since government mm. cannot afford to pay in a tranche. So on modalities for payment, the defense minister told the veterans that the Ministry of Defense has taken uh, steps to facilitate the seamless payment of the SDA to qualified veterans through the review of the effective date of the Manual for Financial Administration, they call it MAFA, as of 2017. So let's have a conversation around this this morning. Uh, we understand that the government also approved the creation of a new Department of Veterans Affairs in the, in the Ministry of Defense. Our guest this morning will, have, will help us understand what this whole thing is about. Ambassador Roy Oamien Okediavie, is director of media CCV. He is there alongside Abiodun Drewaye Herbert, who is the national coordinator of Remenaf. Gentlemen, thank you for being a part of our conversation this morning. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. Good yeah. morning, Nigerians. Thank you. So let's begin with uh, Ambassador Roy Okidieve. What are we looking at here? Many people are probably hearing about this for the first time. Well, um, thank you very much. Um, and I'm very happy about the, the rider you threw out. You know, you talked about the approval. But before that approval, there was a protest in January, if you recall, before the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. And that protest was for two major things. The um, old arrears of 24 months for the minimum wage increment. And um, that is being given attention right now, but it is also bagged up into tranches of payments in peanuts. You know? And um, right now, the security department allowance, we had to start writing letters again starts to agitate again before the approval, before the Honorable Minister of Defense called for a parley and a discussion. And in that discussion, in that approval, in the previous um, 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 protest, all of that, people are leaving the armed forces and they are paid in full. And you know, when you pay those people in full, and you are telling us you want to pay us in tranches between three to five years, how many would be alive? Because this catchment that you have right now is comprised of the elderly, those that trained and commanded the ones that you are paying in full right now. So we didn't, we are not able to factor in the um, understanding that got to such resolutions, you know. And the minister promised on that day that he will go and have a discussion and get back to us. We have written a letter to him as a reminder on how it was resolved between three to five years. There has been no response. Okay, that's uh, at least now we know what the issues are. Uh, you mm -hmm. want to add to it, uh, Mr. Drew A. Herbert? Yeah, uh, thank you once again, uh, Nigerians and my distinguished comrades. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Actually, what my colleague had said is correct, very correct. Um, we had written letters, series of letters, and like you mentioned, the, the, the situation we are right now didn't just start today. Um, we started this agitation as far back as May 2020, when we're you know, excluded from the debarment allowance. 
uh, what they told, that, uh, told us at that time was that only those who retired from 2017 till date will be qualified. And we said to them that we all served this nation. And if security department allowance is an allowance payable to all veterans, retired military veterans, to encourage them and to debar them from using the skills that they acquired in the course of their service to this nation against the state, how then would you say some section are entitled to it while the others are not entitled to it? Just a second, Ambassador. It doesn't just make any sense. Just, just, and just, so when just, we are, no, Mr. Drew yes, so, Habits, just, just one second, Mr. Drew I. Habits. Yes. Perhaps a good place to, is a good point for us to understand exactly what the security department allowances are. That's right. And that was what I just said. Department allowances, an allowance payable to every veteran on retirement, right? And then, I mean, it is to debar us and discourage us from using the skills that we acquired while serving against the states. You know the insurgency, you know, everywhere in the country today. There's a tendency uh -huh. that our, most of our members may be frustrated, and then, you know, terrorists may buy into, you know, uh, 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 you know, into them and invite them to give them some kind of level of training. And of course, we have a lot of, you know, skills. I mean, with officers and men that have gone through series of training in this, in, in this country, whether at home and, and, and abroad as well. So it is to debar us from using the skills that we acquired in the course of our service against the state. This money should be paid in bulk so that you can use it to set up business. And so there won't be any need. There won't be any need for you you know, uh, you would rather be, uh, uh, be attracted to any influence, ex mm. uh, external influence, that will make you to use the, 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 the skill that you acquired against the state. That's what the, the allowance is, is meant okay. for. Mr. Drew A. Herbert, um, so if, if you get that money in bulk, it is assumed that it will debar you from going to sell your services or sell your expertise to other people who are working against the state, right? So, absolutely. So. Yes. So, so those who collect that debarment uh, allowance and still go and sell their expertise, what happens to them? First of all, who's checking that nobody is doing that? And if the checker finds that, yes, there are one or two people, well, there are a number of people who are doing it, what happens to those people? Of course, they, they face the rot of the law. I mean, recently, uh, a, a, a retired or discharged soldier was uh, arrested, and it's all over the media. So if you are caught doing that after being paid such money, then you're on your own. You face the rot of the law. And we are saying that we retired earlier. And those who are retiring, even you know, uh, as we speak, have been paid this money in bulk. So why would you need to spread our own payment you know, between three and five years? That's not acceptable to us, and that's not fair. And that's what we're saying, that if this money is going to be paid, then it should be paid the same way others that ha had been paid before us have been paid. And then, of course, they also said, you know, uh, that there's going to be a verification exercise before those who are qualified will be entitled to be paid. And we said no. Because last year, uh, December, uh, we, ha we held a nationwide protest, and it culminated in Abuja here in January on, on 5th. And then it was about the old 24 months of arrears of the minimum wage. Now, after the protest, it was, you know, agreed that the commencement of arrears, you know, uh, will, will be, will, I mean, the money will start to be paid that same month. Although we didn't get it that same month, but we got it first week of, uh, in February. Now, rather than paying this money that has been owed for 24 years at once, 
they decided to split it. And the approval did not give anybody the authority to, to split this money. You know, in this country, there is enough for individuals to steal. But when it comes to those who are, you know, are legitimately entitled to their, uh, their, their allowances, they will, they will find excuses like, there's no money. Who told you there's no money in this country? And that was why I said, there's always you know, enough for individuals to steal. But for us, you, have, you, you begin to hear all sorts of stories. Minister has also made known is that the SDA um, will be paid over a period of three to five years because uh, government cannot afford to pay at a go. What's your understanding of that? Is that uh, a sentiment you share or something uh, that you refuse to understand, with government? Well, um, to, to us, <laughs> as the veteran community, we, we see every day where this same government give palliatives to other countries. We, we, we see it. There is on Vera News. We also know that there are certain persons that have been found that have diverted large sums of money. And those cases have not gone anywhere. We are also aware that certain um, diverted funds have been returned back to the country. We are aware that the country consistently borrows money from the foreign investors and foreign loan um, banks. So in all of these that we see, it is insincere to give us that kind of verdict. And how come those that are living now get the total payment? Why not backlog and say, wait for your time mm -hmm. and pay those that you are owing? Since they are also coming into the veteran community, they will meet the backlog being paid out to others at your set of retirement is captured. You see, these things are just, it's not rocket science, it's common sense. Let me tell you something that um, is part of the problem. Part of the problem is that the Veteran Affairs Department that you just mentioned right now, it's supposed to be populated by veterans holding reasonable, actionable desk and responsibilities because they feel the the impact on their community. If you look at the Nigerian Legion also, which is also <laughs> constituted as a veteran body, it has a larger part of its constituent members as raw civilians. They are not veterans. If you see some Legion people in some places, ask them to show you their discharge army certificate. As I speak to you, they are in guard duties in so many places wearing the Nigerian Legion uniform and badges ask them to show you their military discharge certificates. So once all of these um, responsible desks have been polarized, there is no voice, there is no place, no platform for the veterans to speak. That is why we started to raise um, pressure groups. And all the pressure groups have been consummated under the coalition of consigned veterans. And these pressure groups all capture the commissioned officers and the non-commissioned officers. Even the membership of the one-star general and the retired members of Nigerian Army, Navy, Air Force officers, they are tired of going cap in hand to their subordinates. Most of the officers that hold offices today are subordinate to the officers in the veteran community. And they give you promises upon promises every day. And I will close this, uh, my comment right now with this fact that people are the hems of affairs that are causing this dilemma to the veteran communities should be held responsible as sponsors of terrorism. Let me explain that. Now, if you allow military trained, both local and international, to be disgruntled, to be aggrieved, to be frustrated, mm -hmm. to live amongst people 
where the tendency to be co-opted into terrorism lies. And you know that we have disciplined military community in Nigeria. We have global certification awards to show. And in Nigeria here, you will also agree with me that when coup d'etat became unfavorable, everybody shied away from it and went back to professionalism and enhanced democracy. Now, if some certain military officers in service and civilians in responsible decks of veteran affairs refuse to see the relevance of the security department allowance, you are also encouraging them to support the terrorism that is going on in the country. So, okay. invariably, you are looking at that lacuna and you are not seeing the importance of closing it up. But Ambassador, now that the government has approved the creation of this new Department of Veterans Affairs in the Ministry of Defense, do you expect uh, great things to start happening? Or should I say, don't you well, expect um, great things? Thank you things very to... much. Let me first take you back to the regime of um, General Oloni Sakin. I think um, it, we had this vision that we want to start the Veterans Federation of Nigeria. Because everybody was kicking against the Legion and its ineffectiveness for veteran matters. So we, we came together, the, the, the officer called all responsible parties together. We had a three-day retreat in Abuja. And in that retreat, we raised up committees, different committees, lobby committees, this committee, that committee, headed by chairmen and secretaries. I'm a secretary to one of the committee. And um, in the course of that, we had to come back again for another three days retreat to consummate on all the findings and put up a document to the government to scrap the legion and bring on the Veterans Federation of Nigeria. And until date, that matter just went cold. Now you are now coming up with the Veteran Affairs Department, which we have also been hearing, which has been, these, are, these things have been on ground, is to give them approvals to follow through to be able to approach necessary and um, important um, uh, ministries that are concerned with our affairs, like Ministry of Health in the Defense Health Scheme. We don't even want to go into that because it's just a charade, you know. Now you have to form the Veterans Federation of Nigeria to give veterans the opportunity to hold offices and take action on issues that concern veterans. Now, let me also inform you that um, this whole agreement was documented and presented to government. So if this government that have the Honorable Minister of Defense, a veteran that also got alert when we protested on the street, if this same government that has the president, a veteran that also got alert when we protested on the street, how come we want to take it up with another government that is in eight years, your veteran leadership could not solve your problems, which were gazetted and constituted in the Constitution of Nigeria. We are not asking for any other thing that is not already in the Constitution. So we want to go to meet another government that is coming in 2023. It's not fair. Just to be hmm. clear, uh, Ambassador, and I'm very, I'm sure that many Nigerians watching and listening right now will be wondering, okay, so this is why some of these things are going on. But just to be clear, is there a cater of veterans that are directly affected by this? Let me ask uh, Mr. Adru Wayo Herbert. Is there a cater of veterans in the military at the various levels of our military apparatus that are directly affected by this, while some other cadres are exempted? No, not at all. It cut across. It cuts across. It's affecting everyone. I mean, from the least in rank to the highest. It cuts across. And so, and that's why, you know, we, we are responsible people and we are the most disciplined institution you know, in, the, in, in this country. 
and in fact, worldwide, the military or the armed forces are the most responsible and the most disciplined. And this is why we feel ashamed that we, we, we had to resort to you know, uh, coming on air <clears throat> to say some of these things we're saying here. So if I, can, if I can, if I can ask another question, that, Mr. Herbert, Mr. Dwight to Herbert, the just a second. Uh, for how long has this been going on? Because when you say it cuts across, I'm assuming in my head right now that it's affecting the likes of former General Obas, well, General Obasanjo, uh, General Babangida, General Abdul mm -hmm. Salami Abubakar. If is that in any, is it possible that that's what you're saying? Absolutely so, and it's quite unfortunate because some of us keep wondering. When we had this uh, nationwide uh, protest last year, mm -hmm. and it culminated in uh, Abuja when we, you know, protested to the Ministry of Finance as well as the Ministry of Defense. No one in this country would pretend not to, to, to be aware. And so we are surprised that we have people like those you mentioned who could, you know, sit back and feel comfortable that an institution where they had served, you know, are bringing, you know, issues that ought to have, you know, been, you know, are resolved uh, internally out to the public. I mean, in the public. If it's this is happening to oh, this is where to, we find ourselves. Yeah, if this is happening have, to veterans, uh, uh, Mr. Drew Y. Herbert, I'm wondering how. Just one second, if you can hear me. I'm wondering how you feel when you hear that some of your officers, whether it's that there are rumors or there are things that really did ha happen, that some officers, are, you know, on the fields are protesting that they are not getting paid. So if this is happening to them while still in office, uh, while see, still in service, extent? how in the universe are they going to, what are they going to do knowing that while in, in service this is happening to them, what will happen to them when they leave, when they, they are no longer serving? Absolutely. You just hit the nail on the head. And this is what we keep telling them. That look, the way you're treating us is not going to even encourage those that are serving at the moment. Because when they look back and see the way we've been treated, and, you know, putting all the sacrifices, as we speak, they are everywhere in the northeast, northwest, where there are insurgents, where there are terrorism. These people, it is the reason why we're here today. Just take a look at it. Remove the armed forces from the equation or the project called Nigeria. We won't be here discussing. As we speak now, there are states that some of the local governments are, are, had already been captured by the terrorists. Just, just imagine that there is no armed forces in this country and other security agencies. How will we be here discussing these issues? And we are saying that if there's one segment of the society that must not be taken for granted, it is the armed forces. Because without us, John, I mean, uh, from no country will survive. Just, just a second, uh, so Mr. Drew Wire Roberts. Uh, Drew Wire Herberts. What's the payment system uh, the, the, because to the best of my understanding uh, the payment platform or payment system used for public officers at the federal level is not the same thing being used for the military the military is exempted from ips for instance is there a problem with that payments with the payment system that the 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 military is that's being used to pay military officers right now it's not the payment system that is the issue here. No, no, no. I'm talking about that, that's for Ambassador. That's for Ambassador uh, Roy. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, please. Oh, Ambassador. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, you know, if we talk about payment system, when the, the military was taken out of the IPPIS or something like that, you know, you can recall that the military pension board is solely responsible for disbursement. So the military pension board has responsible officers to handle the army, navy, and air force. And they have the database. Even when a soldier veteran dies, he is struck out of the, pay the payment plan. Now, if you now look at disbursement, military pension board, 
Then regulation from the Ministry of Finance. That's why we shut down the gates of the Ministry of Finance. And they called the leadership into their office in that our January protest. We sat down with them and they showed us inflows and approvals that they have gotten and disbursement, what was possible. And we asked them to give us a letter, which they did. So money comes from the Federal Ministry of Finance to different agencies, plus the military, and from there to the military veterans. So <laughs> there is no other mathematics that you want to do. See, this thing we are talking about started like 30 years ago. And when corruption started to creep into Nigerian system, People that work in the Nigerian system decided to take care of themselves before they leave. So since they will take care of themselves before they leave, there was no recourse to consider putting in effect the constitutional provisions for retirees. If we monitor constitutional provisions for retirees, why will I bother about anything when I know that once I leave service, I will be taken care of. So we have generals in the military that have been found wanting financial misappropriation. Why do you think they want to misappropriate finance? It is to take care of themselves. We have Navy, Army, Air Force personnel, senior officers that have been found wanting for financial misappropriations. So everybody wants to take care of themselves in every ministry. Why can't we focus on securing a standard and ensuring it is monitored to actualization. So when I leave service, I know I will have roof over my head, I will have an existing action medical, and every other thing will be taken care of. You have traced it back to people like General Mbavangida. That protest that we had, where soldiers were carrying mats, go and look at it. I, I, I just came back from the US for, for a business meeting. I was carrying my own mats too because my, my senior colleagues were there. You can see senior officers that cannot put roof over their head. They were there, they are having ailments. They were there and you owe them 24 months in arrears. And they had to come and pr protest. And when you started to pay, People that you mentioned now, all those people that are alive, they got a lot. The president must have gotten his alert. The Honorable Minister of Defense, who might have been in the Ministry of Defense looking at us through the window, he's got his alert. So many other senior officers that work in this government that are holding government positions as veterans, they got the alert. So is this not very, very insensitive to the traumatic situations that this, uh, this catchment of veterans that are not opportuned Ambassador, to connect to government yes. and get some freebies? So, so it's a sad situation. It's most certainly something very, very concerning and something that I believe that having taken the lead of the issue now, everyone concerned would take a cue and know that the right thing needs to be done so we can forestall the evil day. Ambassador Roy Ohidievie is Director of Media CCV as well as Abiodun Drewaye Herbert, National Coordinator Ramenaf. Gentlemen, thank you so much for giving us this perspective, at least now Nigerians know what you are going through and what needs to be done. Thank you very much for having thank us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Sunrise returns in a moment to take on our next issue. But don't forget, we mentioned earlier that at 11 o'clock, there's going to be an announcement. Please stay with us.